Hi guys, welcome to the ep second episode of the programming tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about what you need to start programming. Um, um, first of all, I hate to point this out, but I have to. Uh, not everyone has what it takes to be a computer programmer. Um, I'm sure some of you out there are going to be watching this thinking you want to be a programmer or you at least want to learn how to program and I imagine anyone can learn how to program but becoming but learning how to program and and learning how to program well are two different things um, computer programmers have a very special set of, of skills and as a result programming requires those special skills for example you have to have at least a decent math skill I suck at algebra but everything else I'm okay um, you have to have a very good skill with when it comes to logic as far as what order things come in You also have to be creative, yet be able to think, be able to take abstract concepts and turn them into non-abstract code in order to create what you're doing. Um, programming is a very creative thing. It's, uh, it's both an art and a science at the same time because you can take an idea and, you know, whereas writers take an idea and they write it down and come up with a story, programmers take an idea and turn it into a functional object that could get distributed to millions of users. Um, they are very similar, but they're also very different. One thing about computer programming is rules. Um, just like just like anything else, programming has rules and if you don't follow th these rules, everything just does nothing works. Um, things have to go in programming, you have to be very specific about what you tell the computer. It's not like when you tell your friend to go to the store and buy you some milk. You have to, if you were telling your computer to go to the store and buy you some milk, you'd have to tell your computer which store, on which corner of which street, which address it is, and then you'd have to tell them what aisle the milk was on, which side of the aisle the milk was on, and what kind of milk to get. And then once it got the milk, where to take the milk? You'd have to tell it to bring it back to you. And you have to tell it step by step each way to get there. And then you, what happens if the milk you want isn't there? For example, if uh, you wanted, um, for example, 2%, uh, you would say, uh, if, 2 milk, if the 2% milk is not there, get me whole milk. Because otherwise, if you don't, that's what's called an exception in, in computer programming. If you don't provide the ability for the program to handle exceptions or errors, the program will, will literally crash and uh, will close. It'll, you know, your operating system will give you a message and then the program will close. And you may not know what happened because, or the user specifically will not know what happened because it'll be, the message box that pops up will be in some kind of cryptic language that they don't understand. However, the programmer might understand it because they know exactly what's going on, especially if it's got the stack trace, but we'll get into that later. Um, you also have to have a decent understanding of how your computer works. Uh, you have to understand how your processor works, you have at least a basic basic idea, you also have to have a basic idea of how memory works and a basic idea of how um, 
and how a basic idea of how they interact, uh, and you should have an understanding of your operating system that you're going to be writing for. In this case, since the first thing we're going to be writing is Visual Basic .NET, um, we're going to be specifically writing for Windows. Um, in order to do this, you're going to have to be running Windows 98 or better. And by better, I don't mean Linux. I mean Windows 98 ME 2000 XP Vista, unfortunately, and Windows 7. Those are the those are the language, those are the operating systems that that uh, Microsoft.NET supports. Um, you'll also want to have the latest version of .NET. Um, I believe. The current version that is fully ready to go is 3.5, so I don't think 4 is out yet, out of beta. But anyway, um, you want to have uh, Windows, or you want to have .NET 3.5. Um, you can go to the Microsoft site to download that. Okay, what we're going to be doing now is I'm going to show you the IDE that you're going to want to use. Um, an IDE is an integrated development environment, and an IDE like Visual Studio, for example, we're going to be using Visual Studio 2008, and Visual Studio is a good example of a really good IDE. ID, uh, an IDE allows you to develop within program or within it's a program that allows you to program essentially you you write your code in the program you design your windows within the program and then you can compile it within the program the, uh, the IDE will also give you error messages while you're debugging things like that so uh, let me pull up a random program here that I've written in .NET this is one I'm currently working on and uh, you can see, you know, this is some of the code. It's just a small example. There, are, you can see all the different, um, all the different things in here. And uh, this is just some of the code. Uh, let me give you a brief tour of this. This is, by the way, this is uh, the full version of Visual Studio. You're probably not going to be able to use that, but um, I can take you to a place where you can download Visual Studio. Uh, menu bar, toolbar. Over here is the toolbox where you, when you develop when you're designing a window or a form as it's called in Visual Basic and C Sharp, um, all of the controls, we'll talk about those later, are stored in here. Um, then there are also the code files. Up here are the different tabs that have all the different things that are open. And you can also des design um, icons within Visual Studio. You have complete access to everything you need within one IDE. And since I'm running out of time, I'm going to go ahead and tell you how to get to, uh, I'll provide a link to how to get to a free version of Visual Studio for Visual Basic.net. Um, just follow the link. It's in the comment section, uh, not the comment section, the description section right down here. Um, it used to be over there, but, or over there. I, well, it's down there now. Uh, see you next episode. Um, I'll give you more instructions then. See ya.